Uh, just to start off the service, I'd like to do uh, an acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the sovereign first peoples of these lands and waters where we meet, the Bidjigal people. We pay our respects to elders past and present and to all descendants who have cared for this place since creation. We also honour all other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Again, a very warm welcome to you this morning for this combined service on Christmas Eve. I'm Hugh Darling, and together with John Humphreys and the rest of the worship team, uh, welcome to here uh, to St Matthews and to also all those people online as well. Um, I'm going to start off this morning with lighting the Christ candle. And we light the Christ candle as a reminder to us all that Christ is the light of the world. We come now to a time of the peace. And I invite you to um, respond in bold. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our call to connect with God, our Advent liturgy this morning. Advent means the fact that an event is happening, an invention being made or a person arriving. Christ, you are the light of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. But also, but you also call us to be light in the world as we shine in your way. We light candles not to look towards your coming amongst us, but to celebrate the advent of you being here, already at work to bring in your kingdom, which is yet to be fully come, but is present in its potency and potential. God, we light the candle for love, accompanied by the candles for hope and peace and joy. Faith leads us into love, for we know that you are your uh, love and all who live in love live in you and you in us. And Melanie will light the Advent candles. And our song team will lead us in the um, uh, song Light One Candle and I invite you to stand, if you're able, to join in. We have a um, liturgy on the, on the screen here and I invite you to join in. God, you are the source of love. In Advent, the people have work to do to proclaim this love and to work to share love with all. Grant us love in abundance that we might shine with love in the world. Our next song this morning is Angels We Have Heard on High 
again led by our um, song team or our song leaders, I invite you to stand if you're able to join in with the words being on the screen. Let us come to a time of prayer, of praise and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Loving Lord and God of hope, peace, joy and love, open our hearts this day as we proclaim your holy word. We offer praise and thanksgiving in response to your abundant acts of love and for seeing light into this world. Challenge us to seek the values of heaven over the indulgences of this world. May the words we experience this day call us to a rich relationship with you and help us to gather hope, peace, joy and love as gifts to be given abundantly to all. We thank you for the gifts that you have given us and that these gifts can be used for healing and hope and to be ministry to those in need and to care for this world. Bring us again to your mercy and care. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Just checking. I always say that because then it gets a chance for the microphone to work. Um, good morning if you're watching online. Um, probably, you know, we've got a few people down with COVID, so we're thinking of you as you're not able to join with us. Um, Hugh mentioned thanks for giftedness. We have lots of people with amazing gifts when you think about it. We have an amazing band, like... How many congregations can pull a band with a brass section together? Um, and woodwind, and you know, that's pretty awesome. Um, Catherine's gone next level with the flower arrangements today. They are like the best nativity flower arrangements I've ever seen. We've still got Rosemary's excellent artwork and the team that helped her with that. We've got I don't know who put the artwork together for a nativity at some stage, but I found it down in the dungeon, so I thought I'd dust it off and bring it up here. We are certainly blessed um, with lots of creative and generous people in this congregation, so thank you. Um, talking about generous, and if you're wanting to be generous in different ways, of course, the Christmas 
goal is something that you can contribute um, to give hope to people in need. There's also the Everything in Common, Uniting World gift catalogue out there. Um, today's active discipleship and um, applied learning activities um, centre around our theme for love. So how many people love you? Do you ever stop to think about that and appreciate that and what that love does for you in your life? So that's the first activity on the front page. And the second activity is, well, if you take Paul at his word in 1 Corinthians 13, love is a sign. Well, here it is, a to-do list for Christmas. Be patient with dot, dot, dot. Be kind to dot, dot, dot. Don't envy others there dot, dot, dot. And the list goes on. So there's something to do. There's also some Christmas colouring if you're wanting to do that. Of course, we've got the activity table that has both the colouring and two different Lego activities. You can create love as a sign and get into the nativity. Um, so if you feel like doing that, feel free to do that as well. Um, also, don't forget we've got 5 p.m. today. You know, if you haven't had enough church this morning, we've got an amazing service planned with the band again. We'll have a play slash written by one of our young people, Melanie, and um, all sorts of things happening. And then at 11.15 tonight, we'll have our carols and candles service as well, which is always a special thing I gather here because I've not done it before here, but I did do it many years ago at God Uniting. In fact, one after one of those services, I formally proposed to my wife, so that was really nice. So, yeah, so it has a bit of memory. So don't forget, if you haven't got one already, there's some work to do for Christmas if you take these words seriously as not just nice words but as things that we should be doing. Let us pray again in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, salvation is your gift to us, but we confess that often we try to replace your gift with our own efforts. We try to complete what is already perfect. We try to add to what is already full and what we have already what we already have. Forgive us for our foolishness. Help us to focus on your grace. Help us to live grateful lives in return. In this Advent time, forgive us our failure to respond as we should. Come to us anew and assist us to receive you with hope, peace, joy and love. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our words of assurance, don't be afraid. Jesus is with you at all times. You are healed, forgiven and loved. Come and live in the love of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Our next song this morning, this morning is Silent Night, again led by the band. Um, and I invite you to uh, stand, if you're able, to join in with the words being on the overhead.
the first of the two readings today is 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 11, and then verse 16. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, for the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be my prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And the evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The second reading is Romans 16. Verses 25 to 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Sorry to those who care about those things, but sitting up the front. Wasn't quite even, and some people find that disturbing. Um... The Samuel reading is not a very Christmassy reading, if you think about it. But we're in this weird thing where, you know, Christmas literally butts up against this Sunday, which would normally, you know, in some cycles, like be a week beforehand. But here we are, Christmas Eve at church. Next, week, next year, we've got to work out, are we having three services on the Sunday? and then three services for Christmas Eve and then Christmas, or is that going to be too much church? I'll leave that to church council and elders to work out. Um, but we have this idea. Today is about love. And there's some irony in that reading that the people of Israel were given a place. And you might say, well, that just, you know, to protect them from evil and what's happening in the world today. But at the same time, the people of the nation of Israel, the people of God, were called to welcome strangers. And so that dynamic requires us to do some thinking given the current circumstances. But love is not just a nice word. And Christmas is not just a nostalgic romanticized idea that we often get. It's actually a really gritty story. And these things that we've been looking at over the last four weeks and take a lot of work 
if we're to live them properly. This hope, which is nice when you've got it, but when you're in a situation that seems hopeless, it takes a lot of work to find. Joy is great when you're happy and things are going well, but when things are sad, and I did a funeral on Friday for a family who um, I had a long-standing connection with. I sadly did the funeral of the husband and I worked with this um, colleague at Pimble Ladies College and I did her funeral on Friday um, after also having done two weddings in the family as well. So there we were in the chapel mourning and grieving just before Christmas. So they were amazing. They were able to still talk about how they will find joy this Christmas because the joy of their mum, even though it will be, of course, clouded with sadness. And we had our special service of remembrance and there are many people in our congregation who still are grieving. We all grieve. There are people that we've lost. So as happy as Christmas is, it takes work to find joy. And peace in this crazy time is an interesting idea. Um, you know, we stressed out about tomorrow and who's going to come and how we're going to get on with the family that we don't usually see too often, as well as doing all the happy stuff. But there's a lot of busyness. And today the fish market will be frenzied and people will be still hitting the shop for last minute Christmas shopping. How do we find peace in this time? But today is about love and we don't always think deeply about the Christmas story. We hear it and we have a sort of mindset of a nativity scene. Um, and I like today's nativity scene doesn't have some of that extra trapping, that it's, it's there and it's raw. As I said, they're not just nice words, but they're powerful ways of being. And today I'm thinking about love as God. God is love. That's what it says, you know, if we quote 1 John 4 something. God is love and Jesus is God because we have the angels saying that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. That's our Trinitarian view. Jesus isn't just God, the Son of God and the Spirit of God but they're actually complex language to describe how we experience God in different ways, in different persons, but not persons as you and I, as separate individuals, but as different ways of relating to God who we know. And so therefore Jesus is love and not just God's son. Jesus is God as love with us now. And what does that mean then for us as we think about it? I don't know what's supposed to be on that slide. <coughs> or I've lost it. Can you rescue me, please? I don't know what's happened. Maybe it just didn't upload. There we go. Um, was there one before? No, no, it goes to the magic slide. Okay. Um, so I want to talk about love as welcome. Who's welcomed in the story? Linda and I went and saw Journey to Bethlehem, which I thought was going to be horrible and tacky, like High School Musical and the nativity scene. And it sort of was a bit like that, but <laughs> the music was. But the story was actually told in a different way that makes you think. And one of the things that stood out was this couple that are thrown together by their traditions that they probably weren't in love. They were probably arranged marriage. That's often the tradition anyway. And how do you welcome somebody into your life that you possibly haven't met until your day of betrothal? And the, the story is well told of this it turns out to be a romance, but, you know, they're thrown together. And then Joseph's going to divorce Mary in the Matthew readings. 
And how do you then reconnect with a couple when, you know, that was going to happen? And so all this is played out and it's an interesting thing. I don't know. I've lost it again. There we go. Um, there we go. So that was one. And if you think about the people that we'll hear in the story, who is welcomed into the story? We, of course, welcome the baby Jesus, God with us. But it's the ordinary people. It's, it's Mary, who's just an ordinary girl, and Joseph, who's just an ordinary guy, and they've got to somehow welcome God into their family in this most extraordinary way with an angel proclaiming this stuff and then having to explain that to family. How do you explain being pregnant and saying it's from God? You know, it's, it's not unrealistic for Joseph to have gone, yeah, right. An angel and God, yeah. Like, just tell us the truth. I'm, I'll do the right thing by you and we'll just get divorced quietly. But God. Even some of the academics try and come up with ways that they can say, well, you know, it's a metaphor and things like that. Um, some theologians. But, you know, because it's a really hard idea. Was this really God with us? as a person or is it just a story a myth a legend that's what we've got to rest how do we welcome that story into our life what does it mean for us and then ordinary shepherds sometimes i think they get a bad rap that you know they're like they're these dirty shepherds out in the field you gotta remember david king david that we heard in the reading was a shepherd you know it was just usually the younger son you know I weren't like these menial sort of slave type people, mangy shepherds out in the fields. They're just people because it was a rural society. Like farmers, shepherds. Maybe they were, I don't know. Different stories again. But they were ordinary people that the angels come and proclaim this, who then go. And even the wise men, the magi, sometimes called kings, we don't really know. And there weren't just probably three of them. That's just their three gifts. They were pagans. They weren't from the nation of Israel. They were foreigners, aliens, that have travelled a long way to give witness to something that was outside their tradition but that they saw was very special. To honour somebody that needed honouring but was outside their culture and their tradition. So how do we welcome the stranger, the alien, the ordinary, the outcast, those put aside? How do we welcome this news that is so good but is so hard to believe? And then how do we live that welcome? Everyone is welcome. We're a welcoming church. But, like, are we? Whoop, there we go. What was that one? Love. If love is welcome, are we patient and kind and not envious and boastful and rude? How do we welcome people in our relationship? And as a community, I don't know where we're going. I was having issues with proclaim. Can you tell? No. <laughs> There's nothing. There we go. All right. Those slides didn't upload. Um, should check that this morning. Hmm. Anyway, let's go back to. Can we do the love, love one? Who's not welcomed in our community? There's difference between being welcome and welcomed. Who doesn't get talked to? who doesn't get patience visited upon them because they're frustrating or annoying or that's how we find them? Who do we leave to other people to deal with because the truth is that we don't want to have to deal with them? 
how do we live this love to all people? After all, God welcomes us and loves us with patience and kindness and all those things. And despite our continual flaws and failings, still continues to work for us, with us, in us, and amongst us that others might be welcomed. So at Christmas time, we have this amazing story, but which we can tend to, if we're not careful, not really think about. We just do Christmas and we sing our carols and we have a lovely time. But Christmas is always more. It goes deeper. These nice words aren't just nice words. They're actually powerful ways of being that we're called to live. And not just now, because, of course, Jesus... I'm oh, sorry, one of my favourite movie scenes is from Talligator Nights. It's got um, Will Farrell and he's having this thing and having Christmas dinner of KFC and Taco Bell and he's giving this grace and he gives thanks to the baby Jesus. I give thanks to the baby Jesus. And his uncle Jed goes, he's a man. He's a man. I give thanks to the baby Jesus. I'll pray to whichever. But anyway, Jesus grows up. He has a message for us that is not an easy way of being. So we can reduce Jesus to the baby Jesus in a manger, which is a sort of safe Jesus, not realizing that he's in a manger, although we sort of know that. But that the weirdness of that story in itself. How do we welcome Jesus or do we leave him outside in the story or do we welcome him into our hearts? And if we welcome Jesus into our heart, like the Apostle Paul's reading, how does that transform us as individuals and as a community that we're not just a community that welcomes people, but where all people are actually welcomed and find their place and find the patience and grace and hope that they need just as we find it for what we need. It's a great and amazing challenge. And so when we come tomorrow and things will look different again and we remember the story and we light finally the Christ candle, we remember that Christ is being welcomed into the world anew. Christ who is already here, that we don't have to build a big temple for. I'm going to build Jesus a big house or God a big house, says David. And the prophet Nathan goes, go for it. That's a great idea. God needs to be in a special house, a temple that looks really special. And God comes to the prophet Nathan and goes, who are you? to say that I need all this if it doesn't live in your heart. I'm not saying all this isn't important, but this is not what Jesus is about. We welcome Jesus into our hearts and we do that when we welcome other people as we've heard what love is about. So how do we love? How do we welcome? How do we live welcoming love just as we welcome love into our life. Amen. Let us sing again, O little town of Bethlehem, and listen to the words as we sing it about who is being welcomed.
present with us in all that we have, all that we are, and all that we do. We offer ourselves in return for you. Take us and the gifts that we offer and use us and them in the world to bring your kingdom further into being, we pray. Amen. Our prayers for the people. The prayers for the people this morning will sound a little bit like a prayer of thanksgiving because it is my understanding that God already knows the worries of our hearts and has already addressed our concerns. On this day when we celebrate love, we are going to acknowledge and thank God for all the good things in the world. Let us pray. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever, to whom be the glory forever, we bring our prayers for the people of the world. God of love, you see the thousands of places around the globe where conflict replaces kindness and people suffer. You see troubled people with guns causing destruction and trauma. You see evil and greed take precedence over justice, but you also see the merciful and the kind. You see the small acts of love happening in a million places. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit that pushes ordinary people to do extraordinarily good things. We think of the countries of Japan, North Korea, South Korea and Taiwan, named in the World Council of Churches prayer cycle. We give you thanks for the beauty and kindness of the people in these countries and for their ancient traditions. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the thriving churches there and also for the missionaries spreading your word into communist countries. God of justice, you see the churches of the world falling short of your decrees. People using their so-called beliefs to trick and cajole vulnerable people. However, you also see the wonderful Christian organizations working to better the lives of hundreds of disadvantaged folks. We thank you, God of mercy, for your words of wisdom passed down through the centuries and for the men and women who can interpret your word accurately for ordinary people. We thank you for John, Mike and Daniel who lead us here in St Matthews and for the many people who work behind the scenes to make this an active church. God of healing, you see the diseases and depression causing hardship. You see the effects of drug and alcohol abuse everywhere. You see gambling and financial stress. You see domestic violence lurking in too many homes like a secret pandemic. You see mankind as we all are, weak and wayward. Yet you love us with a ridiculous, unending love that caused you to send Jesus as a tiny baby to rescue us and give us a clearer understanding of your nature. As the psalmist says, we will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With our mouths, we will make your faithfulness known through all generations. We will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven itself. Amen. I invite you to say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first Noel, the angels did say, was to certain poor shepherds.
Love stands before us again. Love who is God. Will we welcome God into our house? Will we welcome God into our heart? That is what we're called to do. And then go with that love of God, that God in our heart, and welcome others into God's love as well. May the blessing of God who shares us love, hope, peace and joy, be with us and amongst us now and always. Amen.